So today is October 16th and we are finally back up here at our mule deer camp. It's just three of us right now. It's me, my cousin Timothy, and my cousin Sue. We came early because all three of us had the day off. So we came early just to, you know, prepare camp, make sure that people have camping spots and whatnot, and make sure that people can park, make sure that there was no deadfall blocking the road and stuff like that. So this whole time we've just been cutting wood, gathering wood, you know, just setting up our tents and doing all that good stuff. Later tonight, everybody's gonna show up. We're just gonna chill. And then tomorrow is the opener for deer season, the general rifle deer season here in Washington, so. Well, I finally spotted my first animal ever since I started glassing on this rock. And it ain't no deer, but I sure found the honey hole of cows because there is just a bunch of cows. Whenever you're going hunting, whether you're going hunting for elk, deer, mule deer, whitetail, bear, grouse, turkey, whatever, one thing that always helps you as a hunter is knowing what type of food that they like to eat. So for example, here where I'm hunting mule deer, there's a lot of this stuff right here. And this right here is called bear hair. I believe it's called bear hair because it literally feels and looks just like the fur of a bear. Now this black moss is a type of lichen and up here in Washington, lichen is pretty much all over the state. I mean, you guys look behind me right here. That's just a bunch of black moss or lichen. There's also a lot of other types of lichen, but the reason why I wanted to show this was because the mule deer here actually eat this stuff. So as you can see, it grows behind me on trees. So they hang off of branches. And what I've seen these mule deer do is they'll literally stand on two feet just like a human would and then they'll reach up and just eat this black moss off the branches and i think that this actually makes up a pretty big part of their diet during october that's some fresh bear scat 
I can tell that bear was in here within the past two days. I would not mind seeing a black bear right now, to be honest. So I've been just sitting here and then I see two hunter orange come and sit at this little point. I was like, oh, wonder who that is. So I threw my spotter on them and it's my uncle and my aunt. And it looks like my uncle shot a nice little buck. My walkie talkie has been acting up today. So I haven't even like been able to communicate with my family today. As you guys can see, we're running out of daylight real quick. Finally, I just spotted my first deer of the evening. It seems like that deer was bedded in this patch of timber right here, but it's been just bedded there the whole time. And it seems like it's finally gotten up and it's feeding around, but I lost visuals on it. I briefly had it in my binos and then I came to my spotting scope and then I, I can't find it. So I'm gonna try to spend some time here and just try to identify what this deer is. Last light could be it right here. So I'm not entirely sure where that deer went, but I saw its white rump for a brief second. And then this whole time I haven't been able to put visuals on it. So it's getting dark. Even if that was a buck, it's too dark with the optics to even identify if he's a legal deer. So I still gotta work down this mountain because I'm the last guy up here. So I'm gonna make a big loop and then cut down on this ridge then drop down at the ridge down towards camp not the most eventful opening day but still had fun saw some deer so we'll give it another crack tomorrow October 19th, day three of our general rifle mule deer season here in Washington. Headed into the back country. Got myself, my brother Chinu, my two cousins, Sue and Timothy. We're headed into a brand new area. We've never hunted here before. Timothy and I scouted this area two weekends ago and saw a lot of critters. No big bucks, but that was just a scouting trip, so we weren't too concerned. This is the real deal right here, so. We're hiking in, it's like 4 o'clock p.m. So it's gonna get dark here in like an hour, 45 minutes. So we're trying to make it to our backcountry spot, set up a camp and just blast for the evening. If we get lucky, we might shoot one today. If not, then uh, we'll start hunting tomorrow. Hopefully they don't forget anything. Yeah, feels, it actually feels pretty nice. Success!
bad at all. All right, so we just did our first creek crossing and we're all drying up our feet. We brought towels because we told ourselves that we had to bring towels for this hunting trip. We're gonna go set up camp somewhere back over here and then right behind this ridge right here, it dips into a little, I don't know, like a little valley slash bowl type of area. Go set this little knob and just glass for the evening. That thing looks like it should hold some buck in there. So we'll see how it goes. First off, we gotta empty out everything in here, or most of it at least. All right, so it's 5.12. We set up our tent and then we rushed this little knob because it's gonna be dark soon and the deer are gonna get back up and feed. So we wanted to get in position. That way, if a legal buck stepped out tonight, we can shoot one tonight because it's already season. So here there is a three point minimum. So one side of a buck's antler has to have at least three points. This particular valley right here looks, just looks money for a buck to live in because here there's not a lot of trees and this little valley right here that's got the most trees out of how many different drainages and valleys so just gonna sit here till dark see what we can see and then just head back to camp and hunt tomorrow hopefully we see something tonight Okay, I see him, I see him. Chilka got you set up, huh? Yeah, she knew to set up. I just need him to turn. He's like so level with something behind him. He might be... If I say three points, just shoot him. Yeah. He's just right up there. We got footage of him already, so. Okay, come on. Oh, 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 he turned. He's walking. He's moving, he's moving. He's in the brush. He looks like a two by two. He's just on the cliff right above. I think he's a two by two. Yeah, he's a two by two. All right, guys, so we've been looking at this deer. He took off, he went behind this little crest. He popped back out a little bit further up that ridge. Beautiful two by two. Again, here there's a three point minimum, so one side has to have at least three points. Dang. It's past shooting light now, so we're gonna head back down to camp. From where we were glassing this evening, we can just see camps. Camp's only like 350 yards away. And so, you know, for a spot that we haven't ever hunted, I consider that a success. First deer we see is a beautiful two point, two by two. It's just a good start to the hunt, you know? He's not legal, but that just gives you a lot of confidence as, as to what might be in the area, so. Hopefully we can put one down tomorrow. Sweaty. This is the first official morning of our backcountry trip and right now we climbed a vertical mountain. I'm gonna try to make it to the top and glass this mountain over here and that one over there.
there's two elk way down that way. They're about a mile away. I'm gonna get onto this rock cliff right here. That way we can glass both sides and I'll try to throw the spotter on those elk. Whew. Calves are burning. So it's 7.49 in the morning and Sue just glassed up the first deer of the day. It's just a doe, probably like two miles away. We're just perched up along this little ridge. Just got my backpack leaning. That way I can be comfortable in glass. And we're pretty much glassing 360 degrees, just trying to find deer. But ideally, we would like to find them right in here because that's a huntable spot for the day. But we'll see. It's like uh, trying to find a needle in a haystack with this country right here. We've been just chilling here. I just glassed up the first oh, legal it looks buck. Like with first legal buck. It's a nice buck, but I don't know. He's in a he's in a super tough spot to get to. We're just gonna glass, find all the animals around us, and make a game plan. All right, so it is 1.05 p.m. We've been just sitting on this little glassing knob all day. We've seen a whole bunch of wildlife, elk, bighorn sheep, mule deer, nice bucks. And finally, I spotted another deer in the same drainage that we want to be able to see deer because this drainage right here, we can shoot this drainage and we can actually retrieve the animal without that much cliffs, basically. So it's just a doe, it looks like a young doe or maybe even a fawn, but we're just going to be patient and see if there's a legal buck with her. She was probably bedded in all that stuff all day, but we just never saw her because it was too thick. Fingers crossed.
Yeah, he's the two by two. He has the double throw pad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's a two by two, but I, I need to look at the other one though. Mm. Yeah, this guy's the one from two days ago. I don't know if that looks like a doe too. So this morning we just decided to glass from camp because from camp we can pretty much see into this little basin. We were able to glass up five deer, four does in that same two point that we saw the evening that we hiked in. And that two point is actually chasing those does around and since he's doing that it probably confirms that he's the biggest buck in this little valley right here. So we're going to pack up and then just head back to the truck, call it good for this backcountry trip and then we're going to head out to a probably a brand new area too and we'll see if we can make it happen there this whole time we've been out here we haven't heard one single gunshot because seeing an animal and spotting it is one thing but getting to the animal and getting a shot off is another thing and retrieving the animal is another thing a lot of these animals are literally just living on cliffs and so if you shoot them there's a good chance he's going to tumble all the way down or there's a good chance that he's just going to get stuck or he's just gonna die exactly where you shoot him and you're gonna have to find your way down through all these cliffs. So sometimes it's, you just gotta weigh out the safety and is it really worth your life to go retrieve a deer or something like that. As Steven Ranella said, some of these mountains, you don't go where you wanna go. You go where the mountain lets you go.